no need to hurry, no need to sparkly, no need to anybody but oneself. Good morning, everyone. I have a question for you. What do you know about Virginia Woolf? Let's act like you know nothing. Firstly, we begin with the biography. Adeline Virginia Stephen was born in 1882 in a large and wealthy family. In the following 10 years, she lost her mother and father and two of her brother. These losses lead her to the first depressive episode. She always loved reading and writing. She became a writer and a member of the famous Bloomsbury Group, where she met Leonard, whom she married in 1912, and whom she loved deeply. For the following years between World War I and World War II, for the following year between World War I and World War II, she published her famous works like To the Lighthouse, Mrs. Dalloway, Orlando, and the essay The Rooms One Owns. Virginia Woolf is an incredible, strong, unconventional, and sensitive woman. This very smart woman wasn't, wasn't only one of the famous and most representative modelism writers. She was also a feminist. She was an intellectual, intellectual who rejected the stereotype of Virginia's ear about women, and uh, she tried to find another way to be a woman. After her nervous breakdown in March 1941, Virginia committed suicide by drowning herself in the river Ouse. We are beginning with one of her most famous uh, works that is called Mrs. Dalloway. One of her most famous novels written by Virginia in 1925 can be considered one of the most modern novels at the same time. The plot covers just one day during which the main character is preparing a party and she constantly thinks about her first love, about her life, about her focusing of feeling and emotion. Mrs. Dalloway is extremely superficial because she is always considerate about her party. Here, Virginia is criticizing the hypocrisy and the superficiality of the upper middle class. Moreover, Virginia is looking inside a woman that everybody considers a model, always happy and without problems to highlight that all not glitter is gold. In fact, Mrs. Dalloway is not happy at all. This is an extremely important innovation because the focus is on what happens inside the woman, inside the individual, focus on his feeling, emotion, and inner reality. Going ahead with another of her most famous works, Khaled Orlando. Wolf was deeply aware that men and women have to follow precise rules in the society, but they should be free to express themselves independently from the rules that they should follow. In 1958, Virginia wrote Orlando, a novel that deals with a man who lived through many centuries and during his life he even changed in sex a lot of time. Orlando is a single character with a lot of identities. In fact, the protagonist is a poet, one of Queen Elizabeth I's lover, a spy, a woman, and many others. Virginia Woolf tells us that we all can be manly women and womanly men. This was extremely modern at, this, at that time and is extremely modern today too. If William Shakespeare had had a sister that shared his imagination and his way with words, would have she gone to at school and obtained the same success? The answer is, of course, no. Her brother found fame and fortune while she remained abandoned and anonymous. Virginia Woolf concretely said that if a woman wanted to write, she would have need to, her, 
to have food, money, and uh, her own rooms. I said before that Virginia was a, a famous feminist. So here we can talk about one of her famous works, that is A Room of One's Own, where she talks about women that need to be independent from men, not just economically independent, but physically independent and mentally independent. In A Room of One's Own, she talks about the importance to have a space, a room from, the, from themselves. And this is not just a physical space, a space where they can express themselves. It's like a symbolic room. In 1931, she gives this unconventional lecture about the importance for a woman to kill the angel of the house. This is actually a metaphor. This is one of the famous stereotypes of Victorian age too. The woman should be the angel of the house, of the house, should be the angel of the house, ever silent and obedient, and they could not stand up for themselves. She talks about police, police, morality, and sex. They were all very new topics in that age. Virginia Woolf committed suicide in 1941. She put some stone in her pocket and committed suicide, drawing herself in a river near to her house. This event has been read with a, a completely wrong interpretation. Too many people told that she was just a mad woman. Today we know that this is not true, and that it's just a lack of balance. Virginia was an extremely strong woman, extremely smart, over sensitive and absolutely able to dig deeper into, into things and look further. She lived in a world that wasn't ready for her. She probably died because she was too strong and over sensitive at the same time. Obviously, we have to remember her narrative revolution. The interior point of view, the reality as a perception of the world outside. Virginia died because she didn't want to make her husband suffer anyone. Before her died, she wrote something for her husband. Jill Leonard, to look life in the face, always to look life in the face, and to know it for what it is. And at last to know it, to love it for what it is and then to cut it away. Leonard, always the ear between us, always the ear, always the love, always the hour. Virginia died because she was very ahead of her time and the society wasn't ready to listen and to hear her thought. We have to remember from Virginia Woolf that she wanted to touch, uh, to touch us that a woman more active in the society is a powerful attitude for the war. Virginia brought about an innovation because she told and she wrote about everything that women are not allowed to talk in, this, in that period. Virginia spoke for the women who seem strong and always happy, but who are dying inside. Virginia managed to forward in an age where people weren't at all open-minded. Virginia has introduced an important literature innovation, such as speaking about the inner part of individual internal time of narrative. I hope that this has been interesting for you and that I hope that you enjoy listening to me. Thank you for your attention.